evening, everybody. Welcome into your box seat. Brought to you in association with Sweet Lou standing at Woodland Start. Massive weekend of racing we've just had on the green surface. We'll have a look at Meffin, both green miles. And of course, it's into Dominion time, Michael. So contrasting uh, race surfaces, but equally as uh, interesting. Sure. Uh, hi, Gregor. Big hi to everybody at home. I hope the week's been good so far. Look, it's sort of clashes of all the worlds, Gregory, because the grass track circuit is trucking along nicely in the South Island. And it's such a cool, unique form of racing here. That's why we think it could be a world record from the horse we're about to see shortly. Then Heaven Rocks returns and sort of kicks off that Auckland Cup carnival, which will pick up momentum very quickly. And around all of that, our best horse is the favourite for the Inter-Dominions, but should he be as short as he is, and our fastest ever horse, have faith in me, is in the Inter-Dominion final, which I can't believe he's made it. And apparently the deal to sell him is going to be finalised today, Greg. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on in harness racing. Should make for a really interesting next 55 or 56 minutes. We'll have a good look through the Inter-Dominion the, in the second half of the show, including catching up with the key driver for the final, Todd McCarthy. Of course, Tiger Tara has barrier one. Let's go back to the Mount Harding, though, where I understand the first of the green miles is a world record and potentially the second one is too for the trotters. But here's AG's White Sox in the trail. Uh, they went 155 overall. James Dean was brave again. Uh, he's a sitting duck in most of these races because of his ra racing pattern. But AG's White Sox off the back of this, Michael, of course, now nominated for the Auckland Cup. It's AG's White Sox, a length and a half, James Dean, then out to Orlando, AG's White Sox, and Ricky's Gold Cap won the Green Mile. AG's White Sox beat James Dean out to Orlando, Mongolian hero. I had the feeling, Greg, I've seen that race a few times before, because some of the Green Miles in the past have been very similar. Good horses get on the speed, um, obviously the inside at Methven can be very, very flat and very fast, and... It's just impossible to make ground on most of these grass tracks because you lose, there's no banking on the bends, but in saying that he was better than those. It was horses. like a premier race though, you yeah, keep talking about being on the markers yeah. and not covering extra ground, it was very similar because of the speed they well, went. And also, he's probably going to go further in life than most of those horses, James Dean's a really good Country Cups horse. Um, Seal the deal, I'm not sure about. I'm not sure where he's at. He's he was lost the, his mojo, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he has a bit. And here's the start of the race. The, the surprise at the start, I think we thought AG's White Sox might lead, and um, he was beaten off the gate. But By uh, Franco Texas, who did the same thing last year, although he's not racing anywhere near as good, because he went on and won the race last year. No, exactly right. A, a, after having a similar run to what AG's White Sox has. So you start thinking, where does he end up? Well, obviously nominated for the Auckland Cup. And he's only a four-year-old in what's becoming an incredibly strong four-year-old crop. Vincent, who's been trialling well, of course, Ultimate Machete. Um, Jack's legend, this horse, Star Galleria. So most of them are, are Auckland Cup quality horses. Whether it's a bit too early for this horse, I probably think it is. But he reminds me a little bit, not in racing style, but of his ability levels of Mossdale Connor. Very similar. Yeah, yeah. Mossdale Connor wasn't a great horse, but he was a really good horse. And this horse... Maybe even has a little bit more scope than him. Greg. Well, I think he does. Yeah. Uh, he's only had, what, 15, 16 starts and won five of those. And he's, he's raced in good company. Remember, the fixer beat him first up well, on show day. And that it, was a very good run. It goes to show just how hard it is to be a good three slash four year old in this country. Like, to be the top one is just uh, obviously millionaire stuff. But uh, where he fits into that is going to be interesting. But when you go back a few years ago, you would have said Moss Dale Connor couldn't win a Taylor Mile, and he did. And he's in the right stable. Greg and Nina now, with Ben's assistance, are very used to racing these horses at Group 1 levels. They're used to travelling horses. They're becoming a very well-rounded stable. So he'll get his chance. I think it's up to him now. Yep, well, we'll uh, have a look at another success story for the Hope Barn, and it was the Trotters, of course. And well, look how far back everybody knows he is. He's five back on the fence, Harriet of Mott in front. This little diminutive horse, you would never expect him to be able to have won from there, but he did. Well, the Mayor of Methven, Ricky May, knows this track better than anybody and sticking to the inside again, paved in gold. Um, here's the closing stages for the little horse who could. Everybody knows is coming. Greg and Nina and Ricky May are going to do it again. They've won both. Everybody knows the little engine that could has beaten home. Harriet of Mott and great things happen. 
Yeah, very good performance from him. I was talking to Greg and Nina at the Cadet Awards last night in Canterbury and Nina was telling me that this little horse has basically been the kick-around horse for the likes of Monda, Mombay, yeah. um, AG's White Sox. They share a paddock, or he has shared a paddock with both, and he just gets bullied, completely knocked around. by. It's probably hardened him up, though, because... Like I do on this show. Yeah, often, like Michael, I do on often. This show. A lot of people um, love that part of it, too. <laughs> that was his 50th start, everybody knows. He was Group 1 player in the free-for-all behind great things happen. He's won that race. He's coming north to the national trot. He follows speed. He's, he's just a, a, a neat little racehorse. When he was a, uh, a C2 horse under the old ratings, Greg Hope said to me, this is an open class horse. And I thought, really? Uh, have you seen it? It's tiny. And <laughs> it just keeps on getting better and better and better. So I'm not saying he'll win a national trot, but it's not going to be the strongest national trot away from speeding Spur, who's been back at the trials. <laughs> He's the sort of horse who's going to win 25 races if he stays sound, because he's won 13 now and he'll just turn up every week. In saying that, he's the type of horse who could run third in a Dominion handicap with the right run, and we see him here getting pushed right back on the inside, and yet went to Addington on show day off a 20 metre handicap and couldn't make any ground, because he probably lacks really brilliant speed, but with placement and good manners. As I said, he can double up. He could win twice as many races as he's won already because you would think he's a horse. He's not going to do himself any harm, Greg. He's a little horse, doesn't carry a lot of weight. Well, you There's remember a, at the Cup meeting... a lot meeting, to love about him. Yeah, at the Cup meeting last year, he won, like, the C2 race, effectively, and um, we thought, oh, yeah, that's a pretty good performance. Gee, he's done a magnificent job since he's now up to 12 wins and over 130,000. And uh, he's part owned by Alan Puller, who was also a part owner of AG's White Sox. So, and our friend from Cup Day, uh, Peter Bacon, he's he was telling me the other day he's got shares in 20, 21 horses. God which, bless him. Um, he's, he's just loving uh, just, racing these types with the of horses. the grass track racing, um, I suppose we think it's a, a world record for AG's White Sox, just going back a race, 155 mile, because... Obviously, trotters, they're racing the grass occasionally in France, but they're only trotters. And in America, maybe some horse has gone quicker at one of the fair showgrounds, but it's hard to prove. And in Australia, they have a couple of very minor grass track meetings. Now, Richmond used to be their big grass track, and they wouldn't have gone 155 there. So it's it's a silly record to claim, but it, it may be a record. I, I, I think this. Miffin, they should go out and say, come to the Mount Harding, home fastest of the fastest green mile. That's right. And, and they do a wonderful job, Miffin. Gee, that track is manicured beautifully. It, it races fair, but the inside horses tend to get away because you, know, you do have that advantage. But yeah, there's lots to like about the way they do their business. They're aided by the fact that no gallopers work on the track. Yeah, for sure. And there's no crossing, so that's, yeah. that's a huge yeah. thing for them. Uh, great things happen. We've heard subsequent to that run. Uh, still not happy, Gavin Smith, and therefore he won't come north. Look, it's a brave decision because you'd be so tempted to go north, but it's not going to be easy there. Bordeaux arrives up this week. Um, Speeding Spur is going to be back, and, and he probably is the best horse in the country with Monbay in the paddock. So it, it's a brave decision from Gavin, but it's a mature decision not to go somewhere when the horse isn't ready. Whether that means Australia's out of play later for the Great Southern Star is the question mark. It's just a lot easier to be going to Australia from Auckland after you've had that concentrated racing. So... Um, I hope he gets back to his best because without Mon Bay, a horse like him adds so much. Um, yeah, Mon Bay's story, I'm sure, that, that hopefully has a few more chapters to go. Earlier in the week, Addington Raceway, it was size stakes time and it was the silver, of course. And this was a deep race, a really good race. Uh, Major Shard would seen what he was able to do on Cup Day in a 154 mile. He led early in this, then took a trail and... There were rumours around that he was threatened to be sacked by the All-Stars team or he was up for sale. Well, he delivered, didn't he, and delivered in good style. Major Shard, Henry Hubert's gone to Hale Christian to try and grab second, but they won't get Major Shard. Major Shard won it. Second is very, very close between Henry... Henry Hubert was good, very good, and he was good in the size stakes final as well. Hale Christian, I thought, was the winner at the top of the straight. Uh, gee, it was a good performance uh, by Major Shard. Are you seeing a theme here? It's going to be a theme we'll talk about later when we talk about the Inter-Dominions, but sitting on those marker picks, when good horses race each other, it's massive. It's just massive because when you try and come wide, you're running really, really fast, and it's tiring to do that, and then you get to the straight, and a horse who's just as good 
hasn't been running that fast and kicks through. And that's why I was hammering people during Cup Week, don't back horses back in the field, don't back horses back in the field. And there's another example, mm. both races at Methven. Admittedly, everybody knows got back in the field but still took the shortcuts home. It's not so much getting back as long as you're on the markers, it's getting back and coming wide, Greg. I reckon there's probably nothing between four or five horses in Anthem the Anthem was disappointing there, though, because he had a pretty good run. He worked to the lead, and I thought overall he was disappointing. I find that with a lot of the All-Stars three-year-olds. They'll have two good races, then a bad one, and they'll go up and down. And I'm not talking about the ones like Ultimate Machete last year. The ones in that second tier, so often the gap is so small that if they have a minuscule off day they get beaten. We saw that a lot of that reshuffling and shuffling of the of the, the deck of cards for them a lot in their support races last year too. So well, I find it quite hard to bet into these races because it's so dependent on where you land. And that was the perfect example of that. Yep, fun at the beach, of course, uh, had barrier one. Well, what about the fillies? I know, I know you, 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 you've, you've had them. a girl crush on Dizzy Miss Lizzie for a long time, and you've been right. She won the jewels, and you talked me into backing a jewels day, so I owe you one for that. But... Uh, I was surprised that she could come back and do this. Well, I was, as was Nigel McGraw. We interviewed him on the night. He said, have a look at her. She's big, she's round, she'll improve. She's off the speed here. And when you consider Almac was in front of her, uh, Angel of Harlem was in the trail. We know how well she raced both at the Jewels and at the Breeders' Crown. Have a look at her get home here, does he, Miss Lizzie? I tell you what, it was such a good performance, Michael. She was going to be going only to the Sire Stakes final. Now she's won her heat and qualified for it. She was that good, Nigel's convinced the owners to make the late payment for the Caduceus, the Ladyship, the Peter Brecken Ladyship Stakes, Memorial Ladyship Stakes, 7,500 because she'll need another run and she'll need a run at Alexandra Park, so that's Friday week. Big, strong filly, very imposing. I thought the last year's two-year-old filly crop, there was room for something to usurp them. It often happens, the two-year-old filly crop is good and then something comes out. But I think she's the one who might be the one left standing out of this bunch. I'm not in any way um, doubting the ability of Al Mack, but I just think that this filly has more scope. And we saw that toward the end of the season. So this is a big performance. She's got oats have a, have filly a look at her. Yeah, and look at the size of her here, Michael. Exactly. She's by changeover. She's bigger and she's stronger, Gregory. And she's a little bit of changeover. There, there is. It. You look at it yeah. the front on, you're like, wow, she's powerful. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, I think the races at Alexandra Park that are coming up are going to be quite draw dependent to a degree because they're 2200s and they just run flat out. But over the Oaks distance, she's going to outstay most of these fillies. There was and a maiden in there, Shebang. She went another great race. She's shown plenty of ability. She's not going north. She's staying and, and for some easy kills at Addington. The question now for Nigel is the same question for anybody who has good three-year-old fillies. Where don't you go? Not where do you go? Mm. Because Alexandra Park's a natural one. And then you've got... Victoria Oaks versus New South Wales Oaks, and you think she'd be a Menangle filly totally, versus everything at home, and then you're thinking, do we end of the season, do we get to the Harness Jewels, do we go to the Breeders' Crown? I reckon with the three-year-old fillies, you're better off emptying the tank. Take all the chances you can, because at four, sometimes there's not too much for them. There's a dream about me type horses who come back at four and competitive and open class, but they are quite rare, so gee, there's a lot of options for her. She, she could race, in, in eight to ten group ones this season, which sounds ludicrous, but it's very viable. And that's why she was a little bit big in condition, because it's such a long season. I spoke to Barry Ward about that Friday night with Angel of Harlem. She was vulnerable first up, and see she's going to Addington this week. So it's a long, long season. And that's the crucial thing, Greg, when you're punting, is trying to work out who's vulnerable. And that's it's a, why it's a I very, thought she was. That, yeah, it's a very you know? unprecise science, but... If you're only half a run short and they drive you half a run short, you often can't win these races. That's why that was such an outstanding performance because she was totally against the pattern of what we've been talking about. She was just simply too big and too strong for them. We're about to take a break here on your box seat. Of course, with Sweet Lou standing at Woodlands. When we return, Alexandra Park starts to really spark up.
After being in Eddington's shadow for the last couple of months, Alexandra Park starts to get more serious. Last week was good, this week even better. Before we look at those, Gregory, um, Cadet Awards last night in Canterbury. It's always good to see the young stars of harness racing um, recognise. Who were the winners there? A couple of big winners. Uh, ben Hope was the third year uh, leading cadet, so he... Uh, sweep the prizes there, a couple of those, and Sam Payne in his last year, uh, he picked up a couple of awards as well, including uh, the one where he gets to travel to Australia and, and have an experience over there. So congratulations to both those guys. And it always I was seems totally unfair because Ben Hope seems older than a kid. He, he, does, he does, but gee, the, the talent on offer at last night, they all spoke very well. They've come a long way in terms of their education process through Natalie Gamerson and Georgie Bolton. They, you know, they yeah, really are helping them out. When you go to the Gallops a lot and you see how polished many of the young apprentices are, we do lack in that area and the opportunity to maybe dress better on race days. I understand the harness racing people are often driving and it's a dirty job with lots of gear, but just the little things, and I think the cadet school's getting there, because if you're asking people to go to the sales and it'd be 50,000 and a horse, you want people to be seeming to take it seriously. And whether it's fair or not, Greg, the way you talk and the way you dress are part of that. Yeah, and they last night proved that they're right on the on the correct path in that regard. Alexandra Park Friday night was good. Yeah, and two horses who I think are going to stand up in those major trots are Temperale. Of course, he's won a Row Cup and Le Monde. And last week it was a case, perfect example of a barrier draw helping a horse. Temperale stayed in front of Le Monde. I think there's nothing between the two. But last week, this was Temperale's race. Tony Hurley, the Iceman, stokes him up. He opens up by three lengths and the row cup winner from last season he's back and winning for magnificent 204.2 and he uh, sprinted so away uh, from Le Monde and that's no mean feat I know he had a better run but he couldn't have been more impressive he's a big strong horse now Tony fresh up drove him thinking okay we're going to need a run second up he drove him more aggressively there's no doubts he can beat these horses. I'm not sure he's as good as Speeding Spur, but I think he's as good as the rest of them in the country, obviously outside Mon Bay, and great things happen as not coming to the carnival. So look, he, he's going to have a lot of fun, and he's only a five-year-old. He's good off the mobile. Let's hope he stays sound. Gives Tony a whole heap of options. So Le Mans just as good. Um, he, he's not a horse you have great confidence in Le Mans because you remember what he's done wrong in the past, but he's been great this campaign so far. And he's getting so, stronger. So yeah. you add those two to Speeding Spur and then the bunch coming from the South Island, headed by Bordeaux. Even without Mon Bay, these are still going to be really good trot races. Actually, Benchmark, which is uh, trained by Michael Howard, really popular guy. Sorry, Murray Howard, my yep. Really popular guy, of course, through all his work with Chris and me, is returning for New South Wales for the carnival. So. That's one you don't see very often, a New South Wales um, horse coming for the National Trot. So good, strong nominations for the National Trot. Auckland Cup nominations, slightly weird, because Lazarus is in there, and so too is Ultimate Machete. Uh, I don't think either will come. Have Greg. faith in me's there as well. well the yeah. one thing I would say about Mark Purden is this. He changes his mind a lot. He'll often say something on Tuesday and by Thursday changes more. He just looks at them and goes, oh, okay, we'll do this instead. So I'm not saying they won't turn up, but I don't think they'll be there. Well, I he told us that last week, didn't he? And yeah. essentially, what we've got here, Michael, is you can nominate. There's no nomination fee. Yeah. So unlike the New Zealand Cup where you have to make sustaining payments, and the Auckland Cup's not in that situation. So it doesn't hurt to throw a nom in. Have Faith in Me is an interesting one because he is under offer to North America and I think they'll probably sell him as long as he's sound and how would you know if he's sound or not. But He goes to the Inter-Dominion this week but you wouldn't want to s transport him to America now because it's cold, it's snowing obviously in the eastern seaboard of America sometimes this, this time of year. So do they leave him here? And if they do leave him here, do they leave him to take on Lazarus and WA or do they go to the eastern seaboard of Australia? He might stick around here for the summer, even though he has been sold. It's, it's a crazy story. We'll talk more about him later on. But I wouldn't expect any of those three to be in the Auckland Cup. So maybe Heaven Rocks deserves to be the favourite, because obviously Dream About Me is not going there. She had a slight setback, and we'll head to the Mears races, either Sydney or Addington, then Alexander Park, later in, in the new year. Whilst we enjoyed watching Temporale win... You won't enjoy the next piece of footage that we had. Well, I'm starting to wonder if this is jacked up. Last week we had a head-to-head -head bet. You picked the loca and well done, you won, buddy. I'm on Motown here and I'm thinking this will just... Motown, horse on the outside, centre hat and... Seriously, there. Now, how much there? Just, what's that, 80 metres? Oh, Maybe a hundred? Might even be a hundred, mate. Might be a hundred? Might be a hundred. 
Um, There's only five horses. How there, could you There were a few something? question marks about how it wasn't a late scratching. Well, clearly it's stepped off the mark. It's gone, and the race is underway. Once right? the race is enacted, yep. you can't be a late scratching nah, unless not. it's extreme circumstances, which we actually saw with the Galloper at Ellerslie the other day. Um, it was scratched because they thought it was a false start. Anyway, long story short, here's Motown running second. I reckon... Oh, I'm not saying you've done something illegal here, Greg, but I'm very concerned <laughs> that this is being jacked up. So you're now leading 4-3, but that yeah. might be the baddest beat I've had for a fair while. Yeah, I mean, Motown went superb, and, and he's a horse to follow over the well, carnival. They went a very quick time, Yeah, and he lost 80 metres. So I stopped him. I'm sorry. I apologise to the connections of Motown. Going back to that galloper on Saturday, uh, they started the race, Lee pulled it up because he heard somebody say false start, and they actually late scratched it. Right. So I can't remember many times a late scratching's happened after the race was enacted, and that was the case there. Motown, the race had started, the tapes had gone. You've always got to wonder, though, whether in handicap races, if your horse doesn't make the front mark, whether you could say they're late scratched. But in saying that the horse did, he just yep. lost 80 metres. He galloped away anyway, but he was going to, it looked like he was going to come it's down It's still pacing. brutal, wasn't it? Um, uh, go back to show day, though. Alter Orlando didn't score up at all. Remember, he was round yep. uh, just below where we were presenting from, and he effectively didn't take any, any part at all, and yet he wasn't a late scratching either. So. No, I, I suppose with the mobile start, once they enact the, the mobile, the, the mobile yep. and, and the score up, the race is on. But... We better move on it's, from that, because exactly. I, I know the pain's the, 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 there. No one's done anything wrong there, but it's still brutal to watch. Hmm. Brita I, Stakes. I stopped them with my phone. Yeah, <laughs> Brita Stakes, Friday night. I'm sure there'll be a square up at some stage. And uh, good field this. Michael, uh, South Island interest, of course. Sea Swift Joy, after winning the Geraldine Cup, has made her way north. She's very talented. Of course, uh, Bonnie Joan, who won the Mayor's Race on show day. Party on's there as well. She trialled nicely. Better be amazed as back from Kaikoura and a stint in the South Island. So, well, this is a deep race. And a confusing race because they could easily go so quick off the front. They could break 240. Tracks getting quick there again that it's really hard to make ground. But in saying that, the three horses off the second line are better than the horses off the front line. Here's Bonnie Joan in front, winning the race at Addington on show day. Opatama comes wide. It's fifth and sixth in Barry Purden's colours there. That's American Tart and the red breastplate. Yeah. She's in as well. So these are all very good mares, but party on, and obviously better be amazed, the group one mares, so it's a different kettle of fish. It'll be interesting to look at them pre-start and see where better be amazed is, because she has had that little break, and but she has open class form, and Party on doesn't actually have open class form yet. I'm thinking Better Be Amazed could win that race. I presume she's going there instead of the Summer Cup, where she'd be up against Heaven Rocks. Hmm. Queen of Hearts, obviously, is the, the major Well, the Queen tar- of Hearts is wide open yeah. now, because we've lost so many of our best mares. The Orange Agent and Dream About Me are not going there. So what looked to be the mares race of the season um, is turning out to be a very good opportunity for someone to get that Group 1 form next to their name for their broodmare career. We saw Dizzy Miss Lizzie win her heat of the size. Let's have a look at this week's and final heat to qualify for the big final on the 31st. $150,000, I'm pretty sure it is. Wow. I, ben, I, I know you're keen on better joy well, here. I've made her my so, better so of the week. Where's she at? Because I haven't seen her trial and I haven't bothered looking her up because you're going to tell me. Yeah, she's trialled nicely. Really pleased with the way she's uh, built up. Second at the most recent workout at Rangiora was clearly a tick in the box to say, right, we're going north. Uh, she races very well at Alexandra Park. I know her form tapered off a wee bit after she won the Young Guns final, but I think Dexter will be pretty positive from that gate and therefore I think she just about has the wood on these. I think Atari Cullen's pretty good. I know they're really confident she's a good filly and Delight and Me's clearly a good filly. And New York Rain is a big scopey type of a thing too. So add these horses to the ones we saw at Addington last week and there's a lot of depth here. But this is her last year. Um, Young obviously, Guns final. Yeah, all, uh, what was Derby night and you know, she was good enough to beat some very, very good fillies here. On the passing lane, then came uh, up on the outside a sea of gold and purest silk letting down in front. Better Joy, Caitlin Clark on the passing lane. Better Joy in double D. Better Joy, Better Joy will beat out Caitlin Clark. Sea of gold, purest silk. I wanted to show that to remind people how good she actually can be. And like so many of the fillies, they flux in form, don't they? Yep. At two and three at times, and she sort of came in and out of form. I think she but... weakened off during the autumn that she bounced back in Australia. So. It's a really interesting crop because Dizzy Miss Lizzie has to be the favourite for these races now, but gee, not not many three-year-old fillies can dominate both Christmas and the autumn. They tend to be separate bunches. Spanish Amada was one last year who managed to do it. 
But yeah, this crop's got a few chapters to it, and I think a lot of that's going to be barrier draw related once all the good ones get together. I did ask Nigel about how Dizzy Miss Lizzy goes the right-handed way, and he said, perfect. So yeah. there's okay, no, no it's, fears it's, there. I think for people at home, too, it's nice to see a crop where Cran's got a big chance, um, the, uh, the Dickies have a nice horse in New York rain, um, yeah, you've got obviously Dizzy Miss Lizzie for Nigel's team. It's not just an All Stars a thon, which is good for people because they do get repetitive, and that's a good thing for the All Stars. It's a very high level, but I think people like the fact that these Group Ones for the Phillies this season probably won't be dominated by one stable. Mongolian Storm made his way north. He hadn't won at Alexandra Park before, uh, and last week he did. This is the race he goes round in on Friday night. And this is really interesting because we know how strong the three-year-old form tends to be, and the Devil Zone is a very good three-year-old, but I'm just not absolutely sure where he's at. And Mongolian Storm is good enough. I don't think the rest of these are, but he's good enough to take advantage of that. And here he is last week. I know you were keen on him, and he, he won this very He awesome. drew wide, uh, worked straight to the lead, because he's got very good speed. I would see him having another dip for the lead here, even from the seven, but he won very, very comfortably here. Mongolian Storm, he races away. Three, four, five in front. Mongolian Storm, most impressive. Seconds are darker, third solid gold. But he should have beaten them. Yeah, Michael, agree. Yeah. And if he goes that good again, then the devil's own is going to need to be right on his hammer to beat him, if in fact he can lead, because you're not going to come from three or four back to beat a horse running those sort of sectionals. So the devil's own is really interesting. The whole, the whole All-Stars team coming north is interesting because they'll dominate a lot of markets, but uh, it's not easy racing. And they're coming off a carnival where some of them, like the devil's own, were disappointing, but you, you expected to see he more. He had a horror them. run in the size. Exactly, so, so you're expecting to see more. So I think, I think the one we know who will win, if anything, is like a peak performance is Heaven Rocks, because I expect Better Be Amazed to start in the Mayor's race. And then the rest of these are really good horses, but Heaven Rocks is obviously a whole bunch of here. Star so. Gallery is in that Summer yeah. Cup as well, so looking I, forward to this race. I think he'll just do what he does when he's against anything but the Lazarus type horses, which is balance up, get ready to go, and off he'll go. He'll, Forgotten he'll just, Highway's an interesting runner. I just think Heaven Rocks is so dominant for this inability that unless a star gallery had a, even now I can't make a, I can't make a case at all, Gregory, to bet against him. I think the, the book will open a dollar thirty. Okay, look out for the whale watch. He'll uh, talk you through uh, the winners throughout the week, including Alexandra Park, and he'll be there Friday night for us as well. We're about to take a break here on your box seat. The big dance is Friday night, actually Saturday morning here in New Zealand. Looking forward to previewing the Inter Dominion final. Seems like an awful long time ago, Michael. Hector's not at the series, of course. He's had his issues and Smolder's retired. Well, none of them are back. Mm. None of the horses, no horses who raced in the final last year are back for the Inter-Dominion, which is 1am Saturday morning time, Greg. But I think everybody in the country, while we have two New Zealand trained horses there, is thinking about the same horse. Lazarus is the horse we want to be the superstar. He's the hot favourite for the series. Barrier 2 sounds good, and it is definitely better than Barrier 7, 8 or 9. But it's not quite that easy, Gregory. Let's go back to over the heats and check out Lazarus, because the improvement curve has been very steady. This is him last Friday night. Now, this was inch perfect for him. Probably the only thing that stunned me here was how good Have Faith in Me went. But they went hard early, he worked around, he got the lead. Once again, no horse has ever run past him when he's been in front. Um, very, very comprehensive, and they broke the track record. And this won't be happening, of course, in the final. You won't be working to the lead at the mile or anything like that because we all are thinking that Tiger Tara will be there. But this was a this was an outstanding performance. A horse that's got better with each run. Mark's 
seem to have timed it to perfection. But look, he's sitting there hanging on to him and he's smashing the track record. Again, Lazarus in front of Have Faith in Me, and Lazarus by two metres to Have Faith in Me. Like in terms of a trial for a final, it's a little bit like going to the Cup trial the week, well, six days out from the New Zealand Cup, and, and having a similar type run. You just go, well, that's just perfect. It's a funny thing because it shows he's where he needs to be, and he was absolutely dominant in a very quick time. You do wonder about the form of Have Faith in Me and a Hoka punter who ran third. So you think, OK, what does it actually mean? Track records don't interest me too much anymore because they seem to be broken all over the shop all the time. That's what he did on the marker pegs, and that's what he would do if he's on the marker pegs this week. If he leads at any stage in this race without working too hard, he'll be winning on peak performance. But to give you a little dose of reality, let's go back to the first round of heats and see what happens when you're sitting parked at Gloucester Park. That's Soho Tribeca in front. Soho Tribeca is not as good as Lazarus. We all know that. There's Lazarus outside him. This is the ground you lose. This is how hard it is. He comes again really strongly, but this series has been totally and utterly dominated by the marker peg horses. Eight of the nine winners, and in the other race, it was a trifecta for those one, two, three, the markers. Here's Laz working hard. Now this may be something similar to what we see run-wise from him in the early hours of Saturday. Yeah, but I, I also go back to last week's discussion. You do not win an Inter-Dominion final in Heat 1, or the first night of Heats. And he was brilliant, Soho Drybecker. Don't get me wrong, he made a statement, that's all cool. Unfortunately for Kim Prentice, he's drawn wide this week, and we'll talk about what you think might unfold in the early part of this race. And if you saw that, and you were looking to have a bet in the end of the final, you just back so high try back, you'd say, well, he's a local, he's, you know, fantastic. Funny, funny enough for me, if I see that, I don't think to myself, I should back Soho Tribeca. I think to myself, I should back the horses on the market picks, regardless of what they are. And we go to Bunbury. Bunbury, bigger track than what we see at Gloucester Park. Again, same thing. Now here's Tiger Tara in front, and there's Lazarus outside him. This is exactly, exactly what you might see on Saturday morning, Friday night. Tiger Tara in front, controlling a race, and Lazarus having to work harder than him. Now, we know Tiger Tara is not as good as Lazarus. We know this from two New Zealand Cups and a whole bunch of other things in their lives. But again, when you're running these fast times on the inside, Greg, and this could be exactly what we see, Lazarus makes awesome ground on him. Once again, it's a track record, but he still can't beat him. Now, put Chicago Bull in your imaginary mind right now on the back of Tiger Tara after having an easy run. He's going to need to be incredible to win this race, Lazarus. We know he's incredible, but I had a really long conversation with Gary Hall Jr., who, for all his clown behaviour, is actually a very serious thinker about the sport. As he said to me, it's nine metres per lap at Gloucester Park when you're sitting in the running line. They go around the track three times in the Inter-Dominion final. Is Lazarus... 27, or in fact 28 metres better than Tiger Tara? The question, the answer may well be yes. It might be, because he beat him by 10 lengths in a New Zealand Cup. Is he 28 metres better than Chicago Bull? At Addington, maybe. Away from home, when he's drinking their water, working on their track, and he's had a long November, against Chicago Bull, who has had a very easy lead into this series, three incredibly easy runs in the heats, and on his home track, drinking his own water, sleeping in his own bed, is he 28 metres better than Chicago Bull? He may not need to be. A lot of things come into this, the temper of the race, but he may actually need to be 28 metres better than him. Isn't this a scenario, though, Michael, um, taking the parochialism out of it, that all of the connections of the other runners are trying to find a reason why Lazarus won't win. OK, you say Chicago Bull sits in the trail. There's no passing lane there. No. There's no given that Lazarus will drop off or Lenny the Shark, Agreed. or that, Soho that's Tribeca. That's concern for Chicago. So he, he, he can win it, and with a soft run, but all the way through, we'll have a look at Chicago Bull, um, all the way through he's had soft runs. I'm not totally convinced that that's ideal for an Inter-Dominion final either, because no, I, I this should be a gut buster. It really should. And now he's three deep on the markers here, the Bull, and there's Soho Tribeca in front. So this is a relatively similar, similar situation, but put him two lengths more forward. This is the perfect place for him to be. He, he's not a running line horse. Pushing off and just having one run at the leaders. Now imagine Tiger Tara and Lazarus are there, but they've worked each other over. 
this is the sort of sniper who can come out, and it's the it's the the stone in the shoe for me of why I think Lazarus is beatable this week. I like everybody watching the show want Lazarus to win, and he's my clear top pick, and I know he's the best horse in the race. But if he has to cover, which pure mathematics would tell us are likely, if he's in the running line, 27 more metres, can he hold this horse off? I think it's a 50-50 call. In saying that, there is the flip side, and we'll talk to Todd McCarthy shortly, who drives Tiger Tara. He hasn't closed the door on potentially handing up, which changes the race altogether for two reasons. First of all, Lazarus in front is unbeaten. And secondly, that would put Chicago ball three deep on the market picks, and it probably wouldn't matter. So the only reason I'm bringing this up, Greg, is I don't want people to go, I love Lazarus, and I'm going to back him because $2 is fair, and then at the top of the straight, he's really out on his feet, and he's brave, and then he gets snipered. What I would do, if I was you, if you want to back Lazarus, and I know you do, I'd cover in Chicago Bull. Split your betting because it's easy enough to do. Here's the ball on this home track last week, and you're right, he's had a very easy series, but he just gets around the bend so easily here, and he's beating a good horse in Tiger Tara. So th this is the horse I see as 100% the danger to Lazarus. Ironically, they raced each other in the Harness Jewels as two-year-olds three years ago. Good battle for the third. Major Dan Shandal in the bucket list. But it's Chicago Bull. He's holding Tiger Tara. And Chicago Bull has won. Chicago Bull beat Tiger Tara. Yeah, so he was quite brilliant there, wasn't he, Chicago Bull? Pleasure to be joined online by Todd McCarthy. Todd, Greg O'Connor, Michael Guerin here. Uh, thanks so much for giving us your time this morning. First question I've got to put to you. Between you and Kevin Bazuto, are you blown away by what Tiger Tara has been able to achieve since the middle of Victoria, uh, the Victoria Cup, middle of October? Because, gee, he's been outstanding. Hey, boys, thanks very much for having me on. Um, we are a little bit. I mean, we've always had a big opinion of the horse from his first start there at Menangle. And, um, you know, he's had a huge campaign this time in, and, and we couldn't be happier with him. Tell me about your thoughts around this series and how he's gone. On paper, he appears to have had a perfect build-up for this final, and then ultimately, you come up with Barrier One to boot. Um, yeah, he's come through the, you know, the, this, like I said, this campaign he's had. But I, I initially had, um, you know, a few worries about going to New Zealand and then quickly the quick turnaround for the, the big series in Perth, but. Um, Kevin was really confident that he handled it and he's done a terrific job with him so he's come through really well and, and hopefully on in the Friday he's going to be at his best. Todd we just had a look at the Bunbury heat where he was so so good I mean obviously track record but was able to stave off Lazarus does that give you more confidence because I presume if Lazarus had sat parked outside you there and beat you easily you would have had to think about handing up this week did that give you the confidence to stay in front? Yeah, for sure. And I sort of had to get pretty busy on him um, up the straight there to get him going, but that's what he's like. Um, once you wind him up, he, he can go. And I think being that was, even though Lazarus sort of kept coming towards me on the line, it was that really quick lock court. And um, that was sort of what I was most proud of. And even the last 50, he really picked up the bit and, and sort of took me through the line and took me a little bit to sort of, you know, ease him down down the back straight. So... Just that, that on its own sort of gave me enough confidence going into this race that, that we're a real shot. Greg and I have just been talking, Todd, about just how hard it is to sit parked on this track. And you have done that in two of the other heats and finished second both times. Very, very brave on both, uh, both occasions. How much of a difference does it make being on the marker pegs as you were at Bunbury as opposed to being outside a horse like Chicago Bull like you were last week? It, it appears to be an enormous difference compared to, say, what it is at Addington or Menangle on the bigger tracks. Yeah, sure. It's just, you know, you've got to get around that corner and whenever you get to the 20, you seem to lose those two, three lakes around the bend and, and then it's so hard to wind them back in that short straight again. So, any time that you can sort of lead up on a half-mile track, I think it's a huge advantage. And sitting outside them is really tough to do. And when you get into the company with these sort of horses where they're all, you know, such brilliant horses in this race, that it makes it so hard for, you know, each, each other to sort of get around one another. But, um, no, it's definitely a huge advantage being able to lead up, for sure. OK, you got barrier one, Todd. Uh, I presume you would like to stay in front. couple of questions. Does Kevin Pizzuto give you driving instructions? And do you have the raw gate speed to hold out a Soho Tribeca and a Lenny the Shark? 
Yeah, Kevin's pretty good. He sort of he gives me an idea of what he'd like to happen. But um, at the end of the day, you know, the last thing he always says to me, he goes, you know, you're you're going out there and you do your job and you know do what you think's right. So, but um, I think the horse has got you know, good gate speed. I know he's been crossed before by Lenny the Shark, but that was at an angle where the gate goes a lot faster and it's a little bit of a different ball game. But on the half, he sort of he, his actual turn of foot's quite fast off the farm, so. I'm pretty confident that he does have the, the speed to hold up there um, comfortably. So that, that's what we'd really like to see happen. And, um, yeah, but when, uh, when the green light goes, we'll just have to play it by ear and, and do our best. He's a very good stayer, Todd. Uh, you potentially can have Lazarus outside you. Are you concerned about the horse that follows you the whole way, Chicago Bull? Because he's at home. He looked very good winning last time, of course. And uh, if he gets the right run, he can really reel them in in the last couple of hundred metres. When the um, when the draws come out, that was you know the, the, the first thing I sort of seen. No one, oh wow! So that sort of threw a bit of a spinner in the works. Um, you know, we would have liked to have had something you know a little further out in the mark, probably following us. That would have been ideal. But uh, with the field of such good horses, it's going to be pretty hard to break up the field. But um, you know, in in favour of Chicago Bull, he's got Gary Hall Jr. on him, who's just a freak at Gosford Park there. So. Um, you know, he's, he's obviously a huge danger there and he's such a big horse and during you get him out late anywhere, I'm sure he'll be here for one pretty hard. So that's one thing that we've got to take into account too, but we'll, um, we'll just drive the race as it comes and go from there. All right, Toddy, we'll try and make this as simple as possible because everybody's going to ask you, you're going to hand up or you're not going to hand up or you hold the lead at the start. What do you think's going to happen at 11 o'clock on Friday night, Sydney time, 8 o'clock Perth time, 1 o'clock in the morning, New Zealand time. What's going to happen in this final? <laughs> um, I'm really hoping that I pump out of the one gate nice and fast and um, I'm quick enough to hold up and, and we lead all the way and win. That would be ideal. Toddy, uh, best of luck for you on Friday night with Tiger Tara, mate. He's had a hell of a season and uh, we, we're, a lot of Kiwis would be happy if Lazarus can't win, that you, coming out of the New Zealand Cup Carnival with a former New Zealand horse, could do so. Good on you, buddy. Nah, fantastic. Thanks, boys. Yeah, big thanks to uh, Todd McCarthy there. He's a good, confident young man. He's got the right horse and the right barrier on the right track. There's a lot of ticks there. Well, there is. I'm not sure he's got the absolute class to win it into Dominion, but he may not need to be as good as the Joe horses Fist. I just think of Joe Fist, mate. A, a that, very similar you know? horse to Joe Fist. Better horse than Joe yeah. Fist. Joe Fist was just a big, dumb thing. But, look, he's got his chance. I just get the feeling that he's going to be pressured enough by either A, Lenny the Shark, who we don't know where he's at, Soho, Tribeca, potentially, obviously Lazarus, that he might get softened up. And even if he can hold on, Chicago Bull might grab him. But in saying that, the horses outside him, Lazarus, Soho, Tribeca, Lenny the Shark, they're probably not going to drop do, off too much. Do you quickly. think, yeah, that's right. So Chicago Bull getting out could be a problem. Do you think Soho Tribeca is any chance of absolutely blasting and getting past him? This Nothing day? surprises me at Gloucester Park. No. Nothing surprises me. Chris Alford's a wonderful gate driver. He might be able to do it on Lenny the Shark. Um, let's talk about Lenny the Shark because I'm not sure where he's at. He was good on the first, uh, his curve's been down this entire spring, he started really high in the smoking up and it's got worse and worse and worse. I, I never want to doubt him because he's a great horse, but the market is clearly doubting him. In barrier one or two, he'd be $4. From out there, he is going to need to be enormously better than very good younger horses. And let's face it, this series of the three that have been at Gloucester Park uh, is by far and away Miles, the best series. Enormously so. You know, when he won the first year, he had to win it. And last year he obviously got injured and didn't, didn't end so up So I asked Todd McCarthy this question, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I think he's probably got enough speed to hold up early, Tiger Tara, and I think he'll try and stay in front. I do worry about Soho Tribeca, though. I can see him being really lighting him up. Problematic. And, and giving, well, giving him his... <laughs> he's got no chance if he goes back, as is Lenny the Shark. So therefore, what does that put Lazarus? Well, that puts him three back on the outside. Could Mark Purden have a crack at crossing them? He did it in the mm. Victoria Cup. Drawn right alongside Target, Tiger Tara, I don't think that's possible, but yeah. I think, the, I think the Victoria Cup was a misnomer. There was a galloper early doors, and Major Crocker actually handed up to him. I don't mm. think he crossed him. Yeah. What, if I gave you a hundy, what would you do with it? hundred to win on Lazarus. Hunt, so you're that confident yep. he'll win? Yeah. Yep. I, I think he's the superior horse in the series. I take on board all of your mathematics about bends and all that sort of thing, but this is a horse race, and I think he's the best there. I hope 
that he gets his chance mm. around a track that's clearly not that suitable to him. And, and it's not to silence any critics, because he hasn't got any critics. There, there might be some people going, oh, he's too short, There $2. will be in Australia. And, 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 but that, that's all fine. We but, go back to a horse who was better than Lazarus. Choken was a better horse than Lazarus. Yep. Choken was a great horse. And I spend so much time in Australia. They just slagged him. Yeah. They hate anything they haven't seen on their own home ground. And he's won races at Menangle and, and, it, and obviously at Melton. But if he gets beat here, the knives will be out for him. That, that's just the way Australians yeah, are. are. It's yeah. the way they're built. Mm. And they're, they're that with football players and cricket players and everything because they want to think that theirs are always better. They, and, they aren't in rugby. No, no, <laughs> no. So what would you do with your 100 then? I, I, it's an easy, easy equation for me. I'd have $60, if I had 100 I'd have sixty dollars to win on Lazarus and forty bucks in Chicago Bull. At the top of the straight, I think they'll be the two major winning chances. So it's about making a profit. Of course it is. Yeah. I, I don't bet for fun. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I, it's it's like the funny thing about betting against Lazarus is this: it's like betting against the All Blacks <laughs> at a World Cup. You don't want it to be true, but when you collect the money, no one cares where it comes from. Uh, and also, Chicago Bull wouldn't be a bad thing for the New Zealand industry, either would Tiger Tara. These are horses who raced here, horses we sold over there, horses who are good for our breeding Incidentally, industry. on that last... But, yeah. but everybody wants On that, that last night of heats there the other night, 10 races, 9 expat Kiwis or Kiwi bred, so we're more, winning. More, more importantly, for, for what I've been talking about, this entire series, every feature race at Gloucester Park over this carnival has been won by a leader, every single one. And every race, including Bunbury, where there's been major races, the three inter-dominion heats have been won on the marker pegs. So if you're gonna, if you want to load up and have your grand on Lazarus, if you want to do it, and I know you do, he is the best horse here. There's no doubts. But just, just think about the marker pegs. Factor that yeah. into your betting. And the good news about it is, he's a very easy kill here to, to back another horse. New Zealanders hate backing two horses in a race. Every professional punter I've ever met backs more than one horse per race. They'll be only backing one in the Golden Nugget. It'll be older yes, than the shitty. <laughs> How did he get barrier one again? Like, well, yeah, the, yeah. the conspiracy theory about, oh, the Kiwis always get bad draws. Well, he's got one and one. He's just miles better than these horses. If we're talking about Tiger Tara being a factor in the Inter-Dominion final, um, this horse sat parked and outside him. him in the free fall mm. and just smashed him. Then went to Gloucester Park and admittedly was crossed off the gate from barrier one, which is why he's a dollar twelve and not a dollar four in early mm. markets. But this is what he did once he got to the lead last time, and uh, he's just a big, rolling brute of a horse, and he would be a factor in the Inter Dominion final. I don't think he'd win it, Gregory, but this is what he did to the same bunch of horses. What, what do you think out. will happen early? Is there enough? You may know the gate speed better than me Look, over there. Well, you it, will it do. Actually, it, it's not as quick a front line this time as it was last time, and more importantly, because it's 200k, anybody who crosses them hands up. Yeah. So he, he's won the respect. When we talk about Lazarus and that Bunbury heat against Tiger Tara, if Lazard sat parked outside ta Tiger Tara and crushed him, he'd get the front this week. I'm not saying he won't, but he definitely mm. would. And that's where that, those respect factors are so big, especially for big money. This is $200,000. These aren't good horses. He'll, he'll be beating these unless something goes wrong. Mia's race is totally different. Piccadilly Princess won last week, and she was really good. But she was no better than Amaretto, and the two of them are actually very similar horses, Greg. Amaretto's got barrier five here. Piccadilly Princess won on the second line following out Eden Franco, who gets off the gate well, but I expect Amaretto to potentially go forward and get the lead here. I'm not saying a Piccadilly Princess can't beat her because it's 25, 36 metres, and she might be saved up for one run and come quickly, but that's Amaretto outside her there. So Piccadilly Princess in front, Amaretto outside her, and she has done a stack of work and she's beaten easily, but I thought at least as good as the winner. And when we heard from Mark last week, he fears her the most. He said she's the best opposition we've got. And he's inside second row, so... Well, her last 12 starts, she's won 10 of them, finished second in that race there when she worked hard, and she finished second to Lenny the Shark. So Amaretto will be a deserved favourite there. A Piccadilly Princess can beat her, I think, but she's going to need a lot of tempo in the race. Just asked Mark also, would a Piccadilly Princess come home early for the Queen of Hearts now that it's quite open? He said no. So she is staying with Ultimate Machete and almost certainly Lazarus for a summer campaign right through to what could probably be Menangle on the 27th of February. It's a very good look at uh, WA and what's happening there on Friday night. Our own Michael Guerin will be there. So all of the info uh, pre and post you will be getting for sure. Short break for us when we return. Box seat best bets of the week. Looking forward to them this week, Michael.
Let's check out what's coming up around the country this weekend. Of course, Addington, they have a $25,000 pick six racing on Thursday. Only the eight races there, so short in program because, of course, they back up again on Saturday. Alexandra Park's the big one on Friday night, pick six 40k. Summer Cup's going to be the highlight, but the three-year-olds are going to be excellent. And, of course, the Phillies also have a go there. Head down to Forbury Park. It's the same night, Friday night, with the uh, bonus quaddy along with Alexandra Park. It's one of those turbo quaddies. It's always a bit of fun. In the Giggle is on Saturday. We kick off nice and early, 11.40 in the morning. It's 6.40 Perth time. Gregory, no chance I'll be seeing that. And Addington goes uh, on Saturday night, which is one of those, I presume, Christmas at the races things, Gregor, where they're trying to get the crowds in and give them a chance to enjoy themselves. Motokurara on Sunday at just after lunchtime. So, geez, it's a busy old week, mate. Yeah, it is. Uh, and you're absolutely right about the Christmas at the races. That's why Addington have uh, split their nights as uh, Alexandra Park it, it, did it last week. last week for Alexandra Park. Gee, there was a lot of people there. Yeah. They just go along it's good there. atmosphere too because horses. they're going along there to celebrate the year of well, work. And they don't care what the horses are. They just don't care. <laughs> absolutely not. You could race camels. You know when they, Harold Park, they had EI at Harold Park about 15 years ago, 10 years ago, they couldn't race horses, obviously. Uh, so they had camel racing at Harold Park and they got a massive crew. Hmm. There you go. Yep. Anything to have a bet on we the Aussies? Uh, speaking of betting, yes. what are you actually uh, going to stop this week? I've had, I've what, had, what do we this been oh, he brought heaven I'm rocks. Still, I'm still getting over the Motown thing last week and I've taken the easy kill because I need to get my confidence back. I'm a confidence person. I'm going for heaven rocks. It'll just win at Alexandra Park. and I've given you a chance well, exactly. well, you Better join my win and your dividend might be better so you'll get the points. But... Oh, oh, it will just win. Okay, right. Up. You're happy with that. Heaven rocks for you then. Yep, uh, easy multi, I think, with better joy. I've got think, a both question those. for you. Are you going to actually stay up and watch the Inter Dominion? Yes, I am. Yep, okay. I've already decided. Well, there's, a, there's enough good stuff in there with Piccadilly Princess and yep. Ultimate Machete that you actually can yeah. make it and, through. Yeah, and the, the night at Alexandra Park will take us right through. When do they finish, actually? About quarter past ten. Um, then you've only got to really battle it out for the next couple of hours, fill in mm. a bit of time, Michael, and yeah. and, and it, it's it's going to be a lot of fun because if Lazarus can win this, he goes well past three million dollars in stakes, and it, it, it's going to be a special win because the New Zealand Cups. Oh, the first one was incredible. The second one was like, oh well, I sort of expected that. This is a different thing altogether. If he can go over there and do this, I know Smolder did it last year, but it was a weaker field, yeah. and they half imploded and came back to him. If Laz can do this sitting in the running line around Gloucester Park, it's going to be incredible. If he gets to the marker pegs, it's going to be worth watching. Now, it's been very hot in Christchurch. Last three or four days, 30 degrees each day. You're heading to Perth where it's incredibly hot. Our sponsor, Sweet Lou. Here he is, getting cooled off during the day because it's been warm up here as well, Michael. He's actually filled out, Sweet Lou. When he first got to New Zealand, I thought he was quite, um, quite a narrow sort of horse, but now he's turned into a big, strong horse and... Yep, all those horses around the country, they'll be enjoying the uh, the baths they get at the moment, Gregory. And the grass track circuit's been good. I, I, it I has. Thought, I thought so Buckaroa far... Cup day on Yeah, it's had a Sunday. really strong t start to it, the grass track circuit. Oh, by the way, um, talking about... In that little ad break there, we come back out with that little white thing. Ken Brecken was there. Ken Brecken turned 60 on Monday. Yeah. One of the big supporters of harness racing in this country. Hey, um, great supporter of this show. Yeah, there he is. That's... Uh, that's that's him with his lovely wife Karen, and I don't know what he's doing on those other shots, but yeah, Ken well, turned 60. Well, he's being in one of them, and yes. I don't know what he's doing in the second so one. There anyway. is Ken turned, and obviously they had a winner. Too sure where that was taken, actually. I think they had a winner on Sunday as well somewhere, so good on you, big fella. Um, looking ahead, though, this is going to be interesting, this Auckland Cup Carnival, because the Trotters, I think, are really well placed. That a good horse like a Temperale or a Le Mans could stamp itself on the carnival. Bordeaux gets his chance, but then Speeding Spurs waiting there. And to compare them all, the other thing's going to be Heaven Rocks because we've seen this blueprint of Have Faith in Me of you can be the most talented horse in the country, but when things start to go wrong, they can often keep going wrong, Greg. And this is a signature carnival for, for Heaven Rocks. If he wins an Auckland Cup, he might deserve a trip to Melton or Menangle. If he doesn't, he becomes the other thing, which is a horse who is a bully in Easter Cups and those sort of races, but isn't good enough to play with the big boys mm. because of his tendencies. I think he is the first thing. I think he's a really good horse. But this is a signature month for Heaven Rocks because we've seen, with Have Faith in Me likely to be sold this week, how quickly you can go from being top dog to just dog. Yeah, and speaking of the Auckland Cup, Vincent back at the trials yesterday, and very good. A lot to like about his preparation as he comes north. When you talk about Vincent and you talk about natural aims, Auckland Cup, yes, but the Chariots of Fire at Menangle sits beautifully for him. He's won races there before, but 
Ultimate Machete is already in Australia and going to be staying there. Jack's Legends turned into a very, very good horse, and then you have all the locals over there as well. So um, where all these horses go, and that's where it's in, Heaven Rocks is interesting, all of a sudden you say, oh, hold on, he was favoured to beat Lazarus at one stage, not too long ago. Is he even the second best horse in the country now? I'm not saying he's not. But with Ultimate Machete and Vincent and Jack's Legend, all those sort of horses, where Heaven Rocks ends up in this next month is just as interesting. But before then, of course, we need to see where Lazarus ends up at 1am on so Saturday morning. So, Premier Meeting next week, Alexandra Park. Looking forward to that one. Then the 31st is obviously an enormous national trot, Auckland Cup, Sire Stakes yeah. final, sales and, series. And they're making it really fa family oriented. Alexandra Park has said to people, look, if you're in Auckland, come along, bring the family, enjoy yourself, have a relaxing day. It's a day where, even though it's Alexandra Park, people will wear shorts and, and, and a polo shirt more so than the stuffy sort of suit stuff you see on a Friday night. So, we've got a hell of a month ahead, buddy. Yeah, it's looking forward to that. And just a quick note on the Marlborough Harness Racing Club, 19th and 21st of January. They will race on the grass track there. Road's been all cleared. You'll be able to get your horses up there, no problem at all. So Brian Wozni wanted me to pass that on. So, yeah, looking forward uh, to the top of the South Island Carnival, Nelson through Blenheim as well. Thanks for your help tonight. I'm off to Perth next yeah. time. This time next week, hopefully we'll be talking about a New Zealand victory in the Inter-Dominion, and hopefully we'll have lots of pictures of Mark Burden saying, yay. Yay. Bye-bye. Bye. See you from Perth.